SOLIDWORKS 2012 has many great new enhancements to sheet metal parts, some of which are how we made this wire channel. Let's take a look at creating a brand new wire channel to see exactly how we accomplish bending sheet metal parts. To do this we're using a new tool called Swept Flange. Swept Flange, like any other sweep inside of SOLIDWORKS, simply utilizes a profile and a path and it's as easy as that. And like any other sheet metal part inside of SOLIDWORKS, we can of course flatten that to get our appropriate blank pattern that we're looking for. There's more to this design than just that wire channel, however. We also have this electrical enclosure on the back. We want to take a closer look at that as well. Here you can see that we have a flange coming off the bottom at an angle. It should be simple enough to make, but in previous versions of SOLIDWORKS, you had to do some work to get the exact angle and the exact termination. In this case, we want to have an up to vertex termination here. We're simply going to choose a point, and let's go back and see what happens as we make some changes to this. As we reduce the angle of that flange right there, you can see that it is no longer terminating on our frame itself, as up to vertex is based on the angle of the flange itself. New options in 2012 now give us more flexibility by giving us both choices in this case. Let's go ahead and continue that angle out and add that flange. To simplify things, let's open this up in its own window. We're going to add another flange to the bottom of this part right here. Simply drag a flange out, and we're going to go ahead and set the angle, the appropriate angle, and we're going to take a deeper dive in this part as well. We have many flange position options, some of which have been in SOLIDWORKS for a long time, such as material to the inside, outside, from the bend on the outside, as well as the virtual sharp. But a new choice included is the ability to do tangent to bend. And what this gives us is the end of the flange is now tangent to this bend location right here. That gives you more flexibility to get the exact design that you're after. Length is another challenge of flanges sometimes. Again, SOLIDWORKS has always had options for outer and inner virtual sharps, but we can see we're not getting the exact 20 millimeter length that we're after. That length is measured from the tangency to the bend to the outside. This way we can simply throw a gauge or a caliper over this to make sure that we have the appropriate length. Let's go ahead and let's close the corners off on the bottom of this part just to make it look a little bit cleaner. And let's take a look at the inside portion of this electrical enclosure. We want to add some wire clips as well as some louvers. Punch tools have been in SOLIDWORKS for a long time, but in 2012 they're easier than ever to use. You can see that it's, we now have a property manager with simple controls for controlling things like the rotational angle, the direction that the, feet, that the punch tool is going, as well as easy to locate tools. Similar to how the whole wizard works, we simply need to place points where we want each one of these form tools to be. We've added our wire clips, but let's add some louvers as well. As I drag and drop a louver out, we can see that this louver is far too small. In SOLIDWORKS 2012, however, we can now utilize configurations in our form tools. No longer do you need to have multiple files for each individual form tool simply go ahead and specify the configuration that you're after and then use that easy to locate method of simply placing a point at each predetermined spot. We'll place all six louvers on our design, we'll close that out, and the last thing we need to do is create a drawing to document this part. We'll simply choose to make a drawing from this part or assembly and we'll drag and drop some views out onto our drawing sheet. Let's start with a very simple front view, right view, and top view. But what are we always after with a sheet metal part? Of course, we're always after that flat pattern view. Very easy to create. We will go ahead and rotate that around. And we'll move that down. Now we want to think about how we want to locate this. We have sketches inside of our part that represent all of the bend lines. We can also show the overall blank size of this part, but we need to actually call out the individual bends in these new form tools. SOLIDWORKS 2012 now has two new types of tables. One of these is a bend table, which will simply grab all the individual bends and list them very easily out on a table for us. We can simply snap that to our title block or locate it based on an existing anchor point. But probably the best one is the new ways we can locate these new form tools. 
With the new punch table, it's very, very easy for us to simply specify where we want to measure our origin from, and we simply drop the table onto our drawing, and to make it a little bit cleaner, we'll go ahead and combine the same tag sizes. We can see that SolidWorks not only labeled everything appropriately, it captured a unique punch ID for each one of our forms, form tools and punches, as well as the X and Y location as, and the angle. SolidWorks 2012 has many great new sheet metal enhancements. Make sure you check out the What's New Guide to see everything that's available.